The Lord opened my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And here we stand at the edge of Christmas. Christmas is coming. And let it come according to the word of the Lord. According to his doing. And what is God about doing? Miracles. Miracles. And he does them in abundance. We have a group of miracles today. Two of them to be precise. Two miracles for women. Great with child. Gifted life. When it comes to miracles, don't grow accustomed to them. Don't pass them by as they're so ordinary. Been there, done that. The miracles of God are to be rejoiced in, to be received, and to be believed. God's miracles at work. Well, you might say, Pastor, we have several women here at Zion who are pregnant. Where's the miracle in that, Pastor? Don't you know about the birds and bees, Pastor? Yes, indeed. No need to explain. But there are miracles going on. We rejoice with the women here who have been gifted life. Thanks to God for the gift of life. But for these two women, there's something different going on. Because it's done according to the Word of God. It's done by a preached Word of God, which is Spirit-filled Word. Preached by the angel Gabriel, proclaimed the message, bringing life. Well, Pastor, don't you know, when it comes to the response, virgins don't have children. Thus the miracle. Thus the miracle. God does what is miraculous. Yes, indeed, virgins don't have children. That's why it's a miracle. That's why it is God at work, God's gift. Mary had the same question. Mary's question, how can this be? Since I'm a virgin. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child born will be called Holy and the Son of God. God is at work. He's at work according to His Word. And He's at work bringing you salvation. The long-fulfilled prophecy throughout the pages of Scripture is now being fulfilled. What God has promised, God is doing according to His Word. A glorious miracle bringing life, bringing salvation. And now Jesus is dwelling in the womb of the virgin, dwelling amongst his people. And Mary is filled with joy, filled with joy that she goes on a journey. She goes to see her cousin, her cousin Elizabeth, who's on the other end of the spectrum. Elizabeth? is quite along in years. She's been sterile her entire life, not able to have children, barren, and well past the age of bearing children. And God's word came to Zechariah. God's word proclaimed to Zechariah in the church, in the temple. And here's what the angel Gabriel announced to Zechariah. For your prayer has been heard, Zechariah, your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. You shall call his name John. And you will have great joy and gladness. Rejoicing. Elizabeth is now six months into her pregnancy and the baby bump is well showing. And it's a family reunion for these two women coming together, rejoicing in God's gift of life, rejoicing in God's faithfulness, coming together around God's Word. And there it is, the greeting. Mary has a greeting which is filled with God's Word. She has a greeting for her cousin. And the greeting goes forth out of Mary's mouth into Elizabeth's ear. And John is leaping in the womb at the hearing of the Word of God. 
Well, Pastor, don't you know that babies leap all the time in the womb, jostle and turn? Yes, I know that. But that's not what's going on here. According to the text, John leaps upon the hearing of the word of God. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So what's your response? What is your response to the hearing of the word of God? Is it leaping in your heart and in your mind that Jesus Christ has come to save you, you the sinner? Jesus comes to rescue? Or is your response shoulders shrug, a yawn, boredom? Is he done talking yet? What is your response to the preaching of the word of God? Not by an angel, but by a pastor. It's the same spirit-filled word. The same Holy Spirit-filled word is at work on you as it was with Mary and Elizabeth, bringing the gift of Christ, bringing life and salvation to you. Two points in our text that are crystal clear. When it comes to our text, two points stand out. <coughs> Point number one. The unborn baby in the womb is fully human. It is not a glob of tissue to do whatever we want. It's not a choice. It's not something to be disregarded. It's a baby in the womb. And you have been formed by God. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by God himself. You are created in the very image of God or you. And your life is precious. Each and every one of you, your life is precious in the sight of God. It is so precious that he sent his son down out of heaven to save and rescue you from your sin. Life is precious and is a gift. Point number two. When it comes to babies, babies can believe. And babies do believe. How do they believe? The same way you and I do. By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Word of God. We believe in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians. No one can say Jesus Christ is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Believing in Jesus is a gift. And it is the work of God by His Spirit working on you. The greatest recommendation I can have for expected mothers is come to church. Be where Jesus is. Make it a regular habit of your life where you hear the Word of God, where Jesus calls His flock around Him and His Word goes forth and it is a Spirit-filled Word and work on you. And that word brings life. That word brings salvation. And the word of God is filled with blessings. And it blesses you. Notice what Elizabeth does with Mary. She blesses her. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why is it granted to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. How does Elizabeth bless Mary? Because of Jesus. Jesus is the source of all blessings. Jesus blesses you by his word. Jesus blesses you by his presence. Jesus comes down out of heaven and blesses you and brings blessings that flow eternally that nothing or no one can take away from you. Blessings that flow. And now, what is taking place with Mary? The second person of the Trinity is now dwelling in her womb, residing with sinners. Elizabeth even goes so far to call Mary the mother of my Lord. Why does she do it? Because that's exactly what we celebrate this week. We celebrate this week highlighting Jesus, true God 
and true man coming down out of heaven to save sinners. Mary giving birth to Jesus Christ, born of the Virgin Mary to save and to rescue you. It's what Jesus has come to do. And what's Jesus do? He invites you to him. He tells parents, he tells you to come to him. Bring your children to where Jesus is. Bring them to the fault where my blessings flow eternally. Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For such is the kingdom of God. And Jesus put his hands on them and he blesses them. Jesus' blessings flow. And what does he give? He gives you what you do not deserve. He gives you eternal life. Jesus comes to take the punishment for our sin. He goes to Calvary's cross and his hands are stretched out to show you how much he loves you. And his blood runs rich in forgiveness, covering over all your sin. And he dies your death, bringing you eternal life. And three days later, Jesus rises over the grave to dwell with you, my church, to dwell in his word, where the blessings flow eternally. Christmas week is coming. And when Christmas week comes, it's filled with family gatherings. We'll either travel to be with family, or family will travel to be with us. And we have a great example here with the visitation, with Mary and Elizabeth, one being with another. And how will your family gatherings go? Will your family gatherings go? And we'll be there for words of blessing shared one with another? Or will your family gatherings be one where it's the battle royale? Where there's fighting, where there's arguing, and where we're thanking God when the in-laws leave? How will your family gatherings go this week? When it comes to family gatherings, the Lord blesses you. He blesses you because of what He does for you. His life, His death, His resurrection, and they overflow into your life. So what to do with your children? What to do with your grandchildren? Bless them. The world does not have blessings, but you do. You have words of blessings to share, to speak, and to give. And let the visitation be an example for us, the church, of how our Christmas celebrations are to be. Gathering around Jesus. Gathering around the word come down out of heaven. The message of the angel proclaiming Christ born to save you. Words of blessing to share one with another. Because Christ has blessed us with eternal life. And how does the visitation end? With songs of praises. It's called the Magnificat, where Mary sings a magnificent song to our Lord. We've been singing it throughout the season of Advent. And the singing begins like this. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Who does Jesus come to save? Sinners. Sinners like Mary, sinners like Elizabeth, sinners like John, sinners like you, and sinners like me. That's why he's come. And we rejoice in Jesus coming and rescuing. Advent light is drawing short. Christmas light burns bright. And it is burning bright in the light of Christ. May your Christmas be one that is filled with Jesus. A blessed Christmas to you. Filled with Christ. In the name of Jesus. Amen.